welcome back to another episode of DIY Golf Car Garage. Today we're working on our Yamaha G29 or what's better known as the drive. We have an overhead console, this uh, carbon fiber that we're going to be installing. Stereo system with a speaker that we're going to put in this. Then we're going to mount this to the car. But first, go ahead and open this box, see what all is inside of it, and make sure we know how to do the wiring before we ever get started. Okay, we've got all the parts laid out that came in our Mad Jacks box. We have our speakers, we have our stereo system, and all the wiring from the main wires that she cut it on, speakers, high straps, extra wire to run to our battery, our speaker wire, and of course we've got our antenna wire. Now back over here, come back to our activation. The blue one is for power antenna. We're not going to have that because we're going to use the provided antenna wire. That leaves us with the red, 12 plus, the memory wire. 12 plus, so you're 12 volt positive, and the memory. We're going to run that together. Because every time this power, the stereo system has power, I want it to be on time. Not necessarily on, I can cut it on and off by the switch. This hit on the radio itself, but it, with the memory, I want to have this memory wire on all the time. Plus, we have our 12 volt ground, the black wire. Now, for our speaker wires, we have rear on the green and purple wires. For our front wires, are the white and the gray. Now, since we're just running two speakers, we'll run the front wires using my white wires and the gray one. So now that I've got everything situated here, we'll get the console, see how we're going to get it mounted to the golf cart. Okay, our overhead console that's actually going to fit right here. And that's going to look good. Fiber fiber is really popping out on this. But before we can actually get that mounted, we need our bracing. Our bracing is going to be this piece that fits over the front two bosses that stick down. It will go up like this. We have six pop rivets, two large ones that will come down into the larger holes. And then we have four other locations that we're going to have to actually drill through the roof. So, don't like doing that, but once I'm done, I'll put a little bit of uh, clear caulk on it so nobody will see it. Make it airtight and just make me feel better. So let's go ahead and get this thing mounted. Go get my pop rivet gun. now to drill four holes. Okay, we've got the four holes drilled and we have four pop rivets and four washers. Now this part here can be a little tricky. What we want to do is actually push this rivet up through the hole, set the washer over the rivet, so that way we, we put this up there apply pressure to the rivet so that the expansion point up here will actually hold the washer down and hold this in place. So, we'll put the rivet up there, put the washer on the top, tighten these things down. Okay, let's test fit this now.
perfect fit with the contour of the top. Now what I want to do is go ahead and put the screws in it. I want to put the screws in it because I want the holes pre-drilled because the next time this gets mounted, it'd be a lot heavier because it's going to have speakers and a stereo in it. Okay, we've got a console back out. Now, first thing I want to do is go ahead and put the speakers in. Well, the speakers, you'll notice on the back side of them, it's got two male prongs. I want to face these towards the center portion to make it easier to hook up. Radio. Now we have eight screws for silver that we will use to mount the speaker. And if you're worried about getting them too tight, leave them just a little bit loose and come back with a Phillips head screwdriver and hand tighten them. Okay, now we want to install the radio into the little hole here. Now we want to do first is take this little bracket or sleeve that's on here off. They supply us with these two little keys, which go in the little holes on each side. Making sure that the little divot is towards the inside. What that does is when you push it in, it pushes the little bracket out on each side before you can actually just slide this off. Now what we want to do is actually put, mount this. Inside here. Okay, as you can see on the inside here, there will be four little tabs. You'll take a screwdriver just bend these tabs outward. Just like that. There's two on each side. Okay, now that we've got our sleeve properly mounted, we'll go ahead and remove our keys. Make sure our radio's right side up. And slide it in. The locks in place. Okay, now we have this back brace. This back brace will actually take this paper off. Slide it underneath here. Press down on it. Get it into place. Making sure this rear support bolt is coming through the hole here. Then we have washers and a nut to hold this in place. So the back end of the radio don't bounce around. So let's go ahead and get it installed. Okay, we've got our speakers mounted, the stereo mounted. Now we're going to start with our wiring. What we're going to do first is the bottom location here is for the power supply. You cannot get them mixed up because the locking mechanism is a different location on both of them. So, what we're going to do is make sure it goes down here at the bottom. Now the wire is coming up. We've got the blue wire, which is marked power antenna. That will not be used. I do not like having extra wire pulling over. I'm actually going to cut the portion off that has the bare wire. And we have two here, the yellow and the red. The yellow is the memory. The red is the power supply coming into the radio. These two I'm actually going to run together. Using the part supplied. I'll just crimp these together. And the other wire coming out is the black wire, which is ground. 
which will run to the negative side of the battery pack. Now for the wires to go in this end. Now these two wires, we run out the back corner and bend them over like this. We'll, that'll be okay for when we get it mounted earlier, later on. Next we're going to run speaker wire. There's another top opening is for the speakers. Once again what we're going to use, use is the front speaker wires. They're marked front speaker, right? positive and left. We're going to do on the other two that we're not going to use. Once again, I'm going to cut the bare wires off. Fold them over. And just for room's sake, I've got some electrical tape here. I'm just going to tape them together so they don't be bouncing all over the place. ends off. And now we'll go ahead there we go. Now for the speaker wire. Now on this, the black stripe is always going to be the ground side. These you can crimp like this, or you can solder. Actually, you can solder all of them if you like. With a much better connection if you know how to solder. And we're going to do the same for the other side. Okay, got everything hooked up now. Put a little tie strap here just to kind of keep things neat. Next is the antenna. this out to both sides so we can get the best reception possible. Now what I'm going to do, just so this just doesn't rattle along, I'm actually going to get some electrical tape and just tape this down in different areas just to keep it quiet up here. Last thing we want is noise that we don't want to hear. Okay, before we mount our overhead console, I want a place to run the wires for our positive and our ground. And we could just run it right down the front of this pole here. A lot of people do it, there's no problem. And just tie strap it. You can actually use corrugated tubing or that plastic flex hose. Put that down here and run it inside. But what we're going to do today is I'm going to show you a trick on how to run the wire inside the hollow tube. Before we get this extra weight up here, let's get this hollow tube off so I can show you a trick. Okay, now we've got the top support off from the driver's side. 
Now this is the top portion. What I have done is drilled me a quarter inch hole up here at the top, right at the curve. What I've done is I go into my local hardware store and bought me some 20 gauge steel wire. All this cost was mm, like four or five dollars, but it's worth that for what we're fixing to do. What I want to do is take the end of it, just bend it over like that. Then I want to put it down inside the hole that we just drilled and run it down the pipe. Then we want to do that to see it coming out the end. Then go ahead and run it out oh, about six or eight inches. Then at the top here, I want to go ahead and cut it off and loop it over. Another thing I want to do down at the other end down here is to have a flat washer. I want to take this washer and through the end like here. Wrap it around a couple of times. That way when I get ready to actually pull the wire through, I can actually grab, have a little bit more something to grab hold of. Do the pulling with instead of just that thin wire. Now I've got this done, let's go put this back on the car. Okay, now that we've got our support back on, it's time to actually go ahead and mount the overhead console. Okay, now that we've got our console mounted, we're gonna run our power leads. We're gonna run it through this pole. We got the wire sticking out here. What we wanna do is just make it like a little hook. What we're gonna do is run this through, tighten it down. Then we're gonna get some electrical tape. And wrap around it, keep it good and tight. Now the last thing we want, we want is to have this pulling the loose. Now then, that was easy. Now let's just about route the wire underneath the car and over to our battery area, hook it up, We'll have some tunes going. Okay, we've got the wire run underneath the uh, car here. I've got it tucked away, tie strap. Now all we're gonna do is connect up our ground and the positive leads. Okay, we've got these tight. Now, if you'll notice, there's not an inline fuse. And that's because there's a fuse on the back of the stereo. If you want to, just for safety's sake, you can always cut this wire and put an inline fuse, crimp it, and you're good to go. All right, we got this hooked up. Let's see if our stereo works. Okay, we've got it wired up. Here's the moment of truth. Oh, one. Sounds good to me. One good thing about this, it is water resistant. We've got a place up here for a flash drive, USB, if you got your music on there. We even got a port here you can run a wire from your phone to this stereo system and listen to tunes. I hope today's episode, hooking this uh, radio up, putting it in the console, was uh, helpful to you. If you have any questions or comments, leave it down below. Don't forget to subscribe. And once again, thank you for visiting us here at DIY Golf Car Garage.